And with us right now, Bill Alderson. Bill, you're the CTO for Security Institute on the web at securityinstitute.com. And under that umbrella, you've got a, a few things that I, I'm, I'm very excited to have this conversation just in terms of like what's going on in security right now. We're going to talk about uh, implications for small business owners and even consumers right now. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure to be with you today, Josh. I've been looking forward to our conversation. So to begin with, Security Institute has, has uh, certainly experienced some great growth over the past number of years. Would you mind from a high level kind of explain what Security Institute is and then the kind of the, the um, kind of the ancillary products or offerings that are under that? Sure. So securityinstitute.com handles uh, certification and training for security professionals and information for um, you know small businessmen and, and that sort of thing, avid users of computer networks so that they can gain and understand what's coming and uh, the state of security uh, in, in the United States and around the world. Um, and so for, let's say for a small business owner or consumer, how would they, how might they be, or what might they be interested in learning more about that um, that Security Institute does? Yes. Um, one of the things that's that's a foremost infor, uh, need of information for everyone in the world is the fact that there's a new internet protocol coming, and it's called QUIC, aptly named QUIC, Q-U-I-C, that the standards bodies are putting together. It's just about to be released as a final standard in about six uh, months or so. And it's actually going to change the, the way the world uh, uses the, the web. It's going to wow. speed communications by three to 10 times. And it's going to enable the 5G capability because you see 5G has massive amounts of bandwidth. But do you know that you cannot use it? You can buy it. You can get it. You can have it. You will not be able to use 5G across long distances unless you use the protocol called QUIC, yeah. which, which enables the, the, the media to be utilized. So you can have 5G gigabit plus bandwidth and not be able to actually use it. That's what mm -hmm. QUIC does. Q-U-I-C, it's a brand new protocol from the internet uh, in engineering task force. And I am promulgating information about that and also alerting people that until it's ratified and firewalls can be um, improved to vet quick properly, it's a security uh, risk. Yeah, well, so that's interesting. So um, when does this, when are we going to start uh, when, whether consumers know it or not, when, when are they going to be start using this new protocol? Well, let me just tell you, I just did a uh, webcast yesterday at gotquick.com and my got quick question mark, uh, YouTube channel that's brand new, just launched yesterday. Yeah. Talking about all of those things and answering all those questions and even showing you how you can turn on quick right now as an experiment to see how it works huh. because Google, Facebook, Microsoft, all of them are using it on the server side right now. So all mm. you have to do is turn it on and you can experiment and see what quick will do to your web browsing. Wow. So where do we do that? Like, is that in built into Chrome or do you need a special version of Chrome or no special browser? Version. By the way, I, I'm experimenting, by the way, and I'd love, I'd love to find, I'd love to hear like what you as a consumer, like how you use the web and what you're, we're going to, we'll get into that in just a second. Cause I always love to learn, you know, from security professionals, what, what have you decided personally, but, um, but before we do that, like, how does someone, how does someone test quick? So first of all, you go to gotquick.com and watch the video. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a, a two minute video and I have a 30 minute video. The two minute video shows you exactly how in one click you can change and start using quick immediately yeah. on your Chrome browser in, in under a minute. Wow. Look at this DIY browser, three to 10 X speed improvement, full version. Interesting. Yes. And so you're just teaching people this for free. Like you're not absolutely I mean, teaching yeah. people. 
I, you know, I, I'm a world renowned uh, network analyst. I've been analyzing networks since 1980 at Lockheed. Uh, I'm the guy who dropped into the Pentagon immediately following 911 to bring up the Pentagon communication systems and led wow. the entire team of effort. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I've been around doing that for a long time. And, and so I feel it's my obligation to yeah. explain to the public that's going to affect 2 billion users around the world because yeah. Google and, and Facebook and all those guys are using it now on the server side. Yeah. If you enable it on your Chrome browser, you can try it out and experiment with it. But mm. the problem is, is that for large enterprises, it presents a security problem because mm. the firewalls are not yet able to protect quick like yeah. we can protect existing communications using TCP yeah. instead of quick. So I did a full benchmark of TCP versus quick so that people can understand what's going on and get it firsthand. And I don't care if you're a grandmother who cruises the web or likes to watch YouTube videos, quick is going to improve and you can turn it on right now and test it out with very little risk in the home. But of course, if you're a major corporation, mm. you need to, to be more mindful of who's using quick and have yeah. a strategy. Yeah, right. So right now, generally, you would say just overall, right, right now, not speaking as your attorney, but generally, yes, for consumers, yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. It's generally safe. Yes. It, okay. It's just, okay, so let me explain that quick uses the same protocol mechanism that you watch movies with. Uses UDP, user datagram protocol. Doesn't uh -huh. use TCP, transmission yeah. control protocol, which is more robust and more secure. But you watch movies in your home, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So same, same Lots risk. Lots of them. <laughs> yeah, same exact risk as using uh, UDP for movies uh -huh. is the same risk that you're using Quick because it's just writing on a different protocol. Pretty simple. And it's still, mm. you know, as secure as watching a movie, but not mm. as secure as going to your bank online. Right, right. That's the issue. All right. So love talking with security minded folks uh, and and ask what what sorts of things do you do in your like, you know, whether you're traveling, whether you're at home, whether security. you're Okay, but, let me. Yeah, yeah. You. Like in your normal course, like because yes. I always love learning. You know, you spend the world. You, your world is in this, and so there's so, you've come to some beliefs about you know with yes. a very mature understanding about. Listen, that's. I, I know there's a lot of hype about that, but I, you don't need to really. I, my opinion, I don't think you need to worry about. I don't worry so, about it, but you absolutely should be concerned about X. Yes. Okay. Lots of people tell you never write down your passwords. That's a fallacy. Write down your passwords. Mm -hmm. Here's the trick. Leave a key character out of the password that you always put in mm. at certain places and never write down that key one or two characters, number or whatever. So you can write down your passwords. Just keep a, a small thing to yourself. Make sure you write them down because if you don't, if you don't write them down, you forget them, and then you're changing your password constantly, chasing mm -hmm. your tail. Things are going awry, and then people write down the real password. Well, write down most of the password, but leave one or two characters out in a particular yeah. location, and then your passwords you can remember, you can find them easily. Yeah, um, you can put them right by your computer. But if somebody enters them in, they're wrong because you left out a key couple of right. characters. Right. Um, I, I know one thing we should say across the board is that if all of, and, and, and I think this is really important, any password that you used to use and you use that same password across multiple websites, you can no longer do that. You no that longer have that luxury. Yeah, that is never use the same password that you use to buy groceries to go to your bank. Right. Or and and so my strategy on that is I have a strategy and I have a mechanism that's in my head. I don't share it, but I have a different password for absolutely every account that I go yeah. to. 
Mm -hmm. And you, you can you can put a certain part of the name, a certain part of the number, a certain yeah. piece of the address, a certain part of the phone number. You can have it so that each one is unique and you can always remember it very yeah. easily. However, you're not using the same thing. I don't even use the same password for Bank of America and Wells Fargo or Chase. No. They're all different. Oh, and gosh. I yeah. The key to using it. And, eventually... Uh, yeah, it's it's not if it's when. Eventually, those passwords are going to be exposed in the wild, and then uh, they're going to use your username and password to log into anything. I mean, there's there's only ten banks in the United States. Yeah. So if you if you use the user's email address plus and go to all ten of those banks, one of them's going to hit. Of course, now the banks are pretty square. They you know, they validate where your IP address yeah. is. If yep. it's never been seen. It's getting There's better, cookies. yes. There's other things and they make you verify and validate mm -hmm. and corroborate your information before they let you have access. Yeah, yeah. What about password managers? Yeah, they're they're good, but it's another application you have to <laughs> learn to use, yeah. frankly. And 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 they're you know, but if that if that password uh, company were to get compromised or some of their algorithms compromised, then you've got another compromise yes. right, on larger proportions. So right now today, the U.S. government and military and everyone is fighting the solar winds problem. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's my other business, which um, I limit how far data can travel. So I take any server that has your most valuable information on it, and I limit how far your data can travel. And I have that patent that I just got granted in June 2nd of 2020 on mm. limiting the distance packets can travel. You'll have to yeah. look that one up. But if you're in the industry, you're in banking, you're in government or security, or just want to make sure your devices are safe, um, I limit how far things can travel. So as wow. it relates to the home, think about this. You have pool controllers, you have thermostats, you have speakers, you have televisions. I neuter all of those yeah. using my product capability from Hop Zero to limit how far that data can travel. Mm -hmm. So right behind me is printers and that sort of thing. Do you know every time you run out of printer ink or paper, it pops up and says, here's where you can go buy this printer or ink. Right. How do they know that? Because those printers are connected to the internet, every single one of them, Hewlett Packard, Dell, you name it. Mm. I neuter those things so they cannot communicate further than your home. Yeah. How can you do that? Can you simply do that? I would let, I don't you, obviously do a Google search for this, but uh, is, is it a simple process to do that? Yeah. It's it, There's no software necessary. We... We listen and learn and then tell you what to set your hop value at. And we manage hop count. So if you only have one or two things, you can limit that yourself. But if you have hundreds like companies do, we manage hop count so that we limit how far your packets can travel on yeah. different machines. So your most valuable machines stay in the data center, and then other things stay in the company, and then yet others can go to the internet. Mm. Yeah, so here's um, I'm here's what I'm going to do, Bill. I'm going to give an assignment for our listeners, and I'd like for you to give an assignment for our listeners. So the the assignment I'm going to give you from a security standpoint uh, to our dear thoughtful entrepreneur listeners is I want you to go through, think of like all of the accounts that you have that you're like, yeah, that would be pretty bad if, if a hacker got access to that one. Yes. Um, and I want you to just go through your entire list and check those passwords. And if they are kind of the old passwords where you used on multiple websites, you need to go and change those all to incredibly cryptic. I, I saw a chart and it was amazing about using a password um, you know, Cracker, where it just, you know, kind of runs in the background and tests, you know, you know, if you have uh, a six character password, uh, it's, it, it's it takes nanoseconds, how quickly yeah. that can get cracked versus a 12 character password with multiple, uh, you know, uh, characters and numbers yeah. and letters, it, it would take eons. Instead <laughs> of using your cat's name, yeah. <laughs> use all of your animals' names, or instead of using your kid's name or your wife's name, put first, middle, last, the yeah. longer it is, and then put something cryptic in there on top mm -hmm. of that standard mm -hmm. name, and it's uncrackable. Yeah. 
Yep. A matter of fact, I, boy, I, you know, while we're recording this, I got, um, I got one in particular, this one account, and I just double checked it because I, I store some information in that particular account and Your I just Bitcoin checked it account, and right? sure enough, that was, <laughs> that was an old password. Uh, and I would hate for that one to be exposed. So, yeah. All right. So that's Bitcoin my assignment, Bill. What's, what's your assignment? Problem. Yeah. Well, I, that, I gave, I gave away my assignment. What's your assignment? Well, my assignment would be that number one, um, don't let fear overtake you and confusion. Put together a plan for how to manage your security to make sure that the information you care about most is secure. If you need help, ask one of your um, friends uh, or a person who's adept with computer using to help you a little bit. Don't even give them the passwords, no. but you know, come up with a method that you use. Every day we use passwords. We can't get a, a, around it. If if they give us money uh, on that, uh, you know, that they gave us uh, twelve hundred bucks a, a piece. Everybody in the U.S. Yeah, well, you had to you had to go online to get that money. Mm -hmm. So you know, everybody has to use passwords. Yeah, um, and if you so are working with someone. And you have to share your password with them for don't say to them, oh, well, it's the same password I use everywhere. <laughs> I've had I've had people do that. I'm like, don't tell me that. I don't I don't need to know that. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, Two-factor authentication, I think, is also very important for particularly yes. any banking security type yes. things for sure. And and now they have in addition to uh two-factor. Um, they have an apps that are authenticator apps that Google, Microsoft, and others have Good. that you can use in conjunction with your two-factor authentication. And those authenticator acts actually rotate passwords every 30 seconds. And, mm. and when you go to log in, in addition to your password and username, they pop up and say, give us the number on your authenticator app and you put it in and they oh. work with Google and Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're I like called that. called authenticator. You, I like you that. You want to look into that because it's better than two-factor authentication. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Well, Bill, this has been a great conversation. So again, securityinstitute.com. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for sharing gotquick.com. So it's G-O-T-Q-U-I-C.com. You could watch... Uh, Bill, you did a class on exactly what Quick is, how yes. this is going to impact your future, and then either from a consumer or from a business owner standpoint, what you should know about the new this protocol and, and how it's going to, yeah, the, the, kind of the ramifications of that. This has been great. Yes. Anything else that we missed? That's about it. Quick All is right. coming. You need to be prepared. You should uh, look at trying it out. You might not want to use it in your corporation, <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, take a look at it and experiment with it and see if it makes your web browsing faster. Yeah. Bill Alderson, again, CTO at securityinstitute.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Have a great day.